almost. Donald Trump may very well be convicted starting next week. The case will take a while because the jury has to be selected. But uh, Donald Trump may very well be convicted of a non-crime. What he is charged with is simply not a crime. Uh, it's not a federal crime. It could have been a federal crime. The federal government didn't think it was, and they didn't prosecute him for it. It's not a state crime. And if it's a state crime, it's a misdemeanor. And what the prosecution did is they cobbled together a federal crime, which wasn't really a crime, a state crime, which isn't a crime. And they created what I call the Alexander Hamilton uh, crime. Remember, Alexander Hamilton paid hush money to Mrs. Reynolds to make sure that she um, uh, didn't disclose their consensual affair, exactly the same as the Donald Trump situation. And I doubt that Alexander Hamilton put that on his forms. Uh, he, after all, he was the Secretary of Treasury. Um, but nobody in American history has ever been charged with failing to disclose uh, hush money payments on a corporate or even a government uh, form. And, and uh, the idea that uh, you can have a criminal prosecution based on that is, is so dangerous and so preposterous. We know that uh, the DA of Manhattan set out to get Trump. We know that. But this is a scandal. This is a terrible, terrible case. I've said this before. In 60 years of practicing criminal law, I've never seen a weaker case. Wow. 60 years, dude. Dersh, that's a long time of practice in law. Wow. Yes. Wow. Wow. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, uh, obviously that trial is starting on Monday, I believe. I, well, is and, it jury selection on Monday? or, or the, uh, Well, okay. Yeah, they have a jury selection. Yeah, I, think I always jury consider selection. jury selection as part of the trial. No, no. You right. might be right. It is. But I'm just saying, I don't. it's not like the trial starting. I mean, uh, but jury selection. I don't, I, but he, well, he, he mentions he, later he, on, he doesn't know if it's televised or not um uh, probably not but you know what it'd be refreshing to see that he'll actually get a trial where there's a jury and they can decide something it's not like a oh your case is already decided or you have a judge that's uh, going to just say oh you know what default never mind you know uh, the legendary paul krasner once told me that uh, the um uh, trial of lenny bruce in chicago that he had for for um using foul language um uh, was really, he walked in, Krasner was going to testify on Lenny Bruce's behalf. And Lenny Bruce was in the docket and it was a real trial with a real jury. And it was really for blasphemy because Lenny Bruce had criticized the Catholic church. And that's really politically why he was on trial. And uh, they said, right, oh, he's going to get a fair trial. This is Chicago. What could go wrong? So Krasner walks into the courtroom because he's going to testify and he looks over at the 12 jurors and they all have ashes on their foreheads, as does the judge, and it's Ash Wednesday. And he just cracks up laughing. He looks at Lenny, and he just goes, oh, my God, we're ruined. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's, st he's still going to have the – well, I, the reason I mention that is he's still going to have the 99% voting uh, against Trump jury, Eric, in Manhattan. Sure. Uh, later on in that same clip that you showed, Dershowitz goes into – the fact that the case has not been moved to Staten Island or Rockland County, uh, which is absolutely correct. Uh, but he said that's, you know, one of the, the sub points of this thing, how you get a jury. I, I've seen some of the questions and they're really slanted to avoid getting a Trump person on the jury. Right. No, that makes you know, sense. I mean, there's questions. Do you support the Proud Boys? I mean, have you ever voted for a Republican? I mean, the, the questions are are designed to eliminate one Trumper getting on there, for Christ's sakes. Uh, it is what it is. But by, by the way, um, sorry for the delays with everybody. Everything should be running and all the channels. This is the uh, closest I've ever come to it. I'm currently sitting in Vegas. Um, living high on the hog at Motel 6, because that's the way I roll. 
<laughs> I'm legendary. I love that Hunley like... embraces he embraces himself in this area. I mean, it's just brilliant. It's the new. <laughs> it's the new hip. I mean, being cheap is the new hip. I, I don't know. Well, you were talking about your brother. <laughs> so... No, I've told you that story. My brother comes to comes to L.A. He's going to be on Jeopardy, and uh, we go into heavy training. Me and my brother, you know, having grown up, watch the game. I'm I'm drilling him for for a week and a half. I drive him. He wins every single round. Ends up winning eighty three thousand dollars in cash, and he goes to uh, the airport and he leaves me eighty bucks for gas. One of the great one of the great moments in family cheapness. <laughs> I love it. Well, at least it was the percentage. What percentage would that be? Point oh oh. He worked out some percentage, and then he asked me if if my accountant could help him uh, pay California taxes because apparently, if you win the money in California, he lived in Colorado. You got to pay California taxes. So I think he used my accountant for free, also. Oh, you should have said, yeah, he can for a finder's fee. Your finder's fee, <laughs> like pay me five thousand dollars, I'll hook you right up. Well, I went to the eye doctor yesterday, and. Um, not it was just a checkup but the point of the matter is the eye doctor told me this fascinating story the eye doctor is a uh, conservative guy a very funny guy and he's got a lot of show business people one of the clients he has is remember aaron brockovich uh, played by julia roberts in the movie sure. oh aaron brockovich is actually his his eye client you know she lives in thousand oaks this is like out in van nuys where i went and he was she was in the day before i was in and he told her this story that she went to like this Bed Bath & Beyond place to furnish a bedroom. It wasn't Bed Bath & Beyond. It was some other place called Planning or Planning Plans or someplace out there, upscale. And she walks into the store and this well-dressed black kid comes up to her and she, he says, can I help you? And she says, absolutely. She says, I want to completely refurnish my master bedroom. And he goes, whoa, 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 whoa. And she goes, what? She goes, we do not use the word master bedroom anymore. And she goes, what? And <laughs> I swear to God, I just learned this yesterday. And he, she says, let me see. Can I speak to your manager? So he goes, sure. And the manager comes up and he says, what is this about the master bedroom? And he says, well, you know, it's a little odd, but we don't use that phrasing anymore. She says, well, I was going to spend thirty to $40,000 in your store and now I'm going to another store. Have a great day, master. And she leaves. <laughs> and I just thought, what a great story. And then he told her the story. She flew to East Palestine, uh, Ohio, kind of where we were, Eric, because of the mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah. ecological disaster, which is her area of law. And she had, I don't know, she had a press conference. She talked to some people there, blah, blah, blah. She may have been looking for clients. I don't really know. A month later, she was on Biden's no-fly list. Wow. Shocking. Wow. 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 Yeah, uh, I'm not surprised. By the way, that whole master-slave thing is yeah. a real deal. Oh, and she didn't know anything about it. Neither did I. Because they have master cylinders in cars, but they have, like, master and slave cabling in yeah. IT. Yeah. And, and I'm just, I just love watching people go all, all around, and it's like, it's going to get even worse, Mark, because now we have problems with female and male plugs. Oh, I didn't even. Oh, think wait a minute! That. I want a non-binary plug, Mark. I did not believe, dude. I didn't even think about that one—the master-slave <laughs> thing and the master bedroom and the slave quarters. You know? Yeah. Wow. I, mean, I can wow. see slave quarters, but it's like master bedroom. Oh, wait. It's like, can we master a skill now? No, that's offensive. Apparently not. Apparently not. Wow. Wow. Anyway, what do you have today on your menu, Mr. Hunley? Okay, on, on my menu, I've gotten different things, but this one came from me. It's a follow-up mm. with the uh, young This gentleman. one came from me. I like that. Go ahead. <laughs> this anyway, one came from me. Oh, I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Go ahead. It? Nate has a great term for him. I, I, I forgot it, but our friend who's telling everybody how to squat. Yeah. Well, he's in jail. Oh, they got him. Okay. All right. And um, now he's crying about his first amendment persecution well he's not even a citizen what the fuck? dude that's crazy okay, uh, uh, nate did set me straight technically citizens have first amendment rights to or non citizens you're talking about, about non-citizens you're talking about right right but this dumbass is claiming well if i didn't talk about it i never would have been arrested yes 
you stupid shit. Yes. You okay. drew attention to yourself. You broke the law. They came and found you. Yes. I hope you never get it. It's out. the goofiest argument ever. Yeah. But I do never. enjoy the fact that he is in uh he is in jail waiting to be deported. And then of course we've got the potential jurors for the OJ. The had the uh latest news that just came down the pike yesterday. OJ. Yeah, OJ's dead. Yeah. <laughs> OJ. Apparently the White House is very upset about his death. Uh, issued condolences to all of his family, except the families that he killed. Um, mm, so, we, no, of course yeah, not. Yeah. The White House, uh, I guess, was upset about his death. Not as much as Norm was. Uh, you know, it's so sad that Norm predeceased him. No kidding. He has, oh, my God. He has so many good routines. No kidding. I know. Um, actually, I probably shouldn't play. I'll get copyright claimed. But remember my favorite one when he was saying, uh, Johnny Cochran was holding up his hat, and you heard in the background, hey, wait, that's my lucky stabbing hat. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> or, Dude, he had a million of them. And, and well, of course, just continuous. Famously, yeah. Dick Ebersole, who had been uh, a sports producer um, at NBC Sports, uh, ended up being the uh, producer of Saturday Night Live, and uh, that's where the conflict ensued between Norm and Dick Ebersole. And he threatened him on numerous occasions, Ebersole face to face. And uh, McDonald said, okay, and just went out and did it again. And <laughs> kept doing it again and again and again until he was fired. Um, very famously You've been fired. around. You've been around a lot of, you know, really hardcore comedians. Yeah. Isn't that exactly what they will do? Like if you tell yeah. them, hey, oh, yeah. stop doing that. Or you tell Gilbert Gottfried, hey, too soon. What oh, no, no, no. Do? Yeah, I mean, but this was face to face with the producer of the show. I mean, I don't know how he got away with it, you know, to be honest. I don't know how he got away with the physics of it, of having those clips on the screen and actually doing it. I mean, Dick Ebersole could have pulled the plug and eventually did. Uh, well, so I it, guess. He, you know, he may not have showed the same thing in rehearsal. Right. It, it could be true. I, again, I'm, I'm always wondering about how they pulled this off with the you know the staff and everyone else working behind the scenes so i think he got away with it for a few weeks and then they pulled the plug on him yeah well he was partnered up with jim downey who was like one of the main writers with him so they could have been well, downey was on the creative he was on the creative side so yeah it could have been i'm not he, sure. he might have been able to work some stuff in the back room no no right no, it sleeps. I, mean, it's, oh, it's, it's, I, I gotta tell you this whole thing about oj which is an la centric story don't forget it, it the local news everything wall to wall but in a good way because it, it brought back so many memories eric of all the people involved and the attorneys and dershowitz and uh robert shapiro i've dude i forgot all of this crap until the past couple of days and there's so much meat on this bone that i forgot about the, the kardashians getting condolences to their dead father i mean kim kardashian getting tons of condolences uh, for the urban myth, which is probably true. Uh, I, I mean, there's so much crap here to go yeah. into, Eric. It's like a feeding frenzy. I had a friend. I, I don't even know where to start with this thing. I'll start with this, just about the victims, because the victims are more important here. Um, people forget a number of things that are L.A.-centric that we know about that the rest of the country might not be aware of, uh, which wasn't even in the trial, was not brought up by the prosecution, um, the killer, OJ, um, cut out the uh, silicone breast implants of Nicole because he paid for them. Uh, in the butchery that he did, people did not know that he cut out her breast implants. Just a side story to get gruesome right out of the gate, because this is about the victims. You know, Ron Goldman, his father pursuing him, the, the Nicole, the battering of Nicole, how no matter what she did, the police wouldn't help her because of the celebrity of OJ, the numerous attempts uh, to call the police before she was brutally murdered by him. Uh, there's just so much stuff about the victimization of these two people, uh, Ron Goldman and Nicole Brown, that that not enough could be said about their, their victims. Now, uh, another story I learned just yesterday, which I had been aware of at the time, was that Shapiro, Robert Shapiro and Robert Kardashian uh, went together to USC to speak to the dean the secretary to the dean has kept this secret until the death Be of careful. OJ. Careful, don't don't say what the crime is, but yes, go on. 
Oh yeah, okay. So words the, for the, the, yeah. The, the 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 secretary was there, and she spoke afterwards. She said, "What was that about?" To the dean, and he came out in the hallway with her, and he says, "You can never tell anybody about this." Uh, Kardashian and Shapiro came to make sure that uh, OJ's US, USC history of being involved with uh, two young blonde girls who looked exactly like Nicole Brown. He had physically assaulted them, and that was kept under wraps until yesterday, until the death when this secretary uh, finally came out and revealed how they had come to USC to make sure that this did not get out uh, during the course of the case. And I also remember them going to OJ's house and how they took away all the photos of him uh, with white blonde women in photos and removed them and placed them with children photos, how they changed the furniture in the house to make it look more genteel. Uh, incredible things that were done in this case that were never done before. Uh, and including I, I, about, about Philip Van Adder, I could get into Van Adder, the, the LAPD cop, uh, both him and Furman, and I've discussed this with you before on the show, and Gonzalez knows about this, and so does uh, Al up in Poughkeepsie. Uh, the, the LAPD had a framing unit, and part of the framing unit involved Furman and involved uh, Philip Van Adder, and uh, Van Adder, uh, which Dershowitz talks about in that clip later on, he talks about the fact that he poured the mixed blood out of a test tube, took it home, Van Adder, of the blood of Nicole and OJ and poured it out onto OJ's sock at home. And the reason that Van Adder got caught was there was a substance, a chemical substance that was inside the test tube that came a out. coagulation um, chemical to keep it. Yeah, that came out in the testing and they knew that he had taken home the test tube. They knew that that uh, uh, chemical was now in the blood on the sock. They had caught Van Adder red handed. And that's the why Dershowitz says that OJ was was acquitted and rightfully so. And that's, I think, what Barnes is talking about because of the framing. Uh, usually the framing is done. And they, they, he discussed this yesterday, Dershowitz. The framing is usually done by detectives to help the DA get a slam dunk in a case where they know, quote unquote, the perpetrator is guilty. And let me just put it that way. Uh, this is done in Dallas. It was done in the JFK case. It's done throughout uh, the nation on uh, urban police forces. Um, and 99.9% .9 of the time, they're never caught. This was a high profile case. Van Atta got caught. Furman got caught. And and the case was, he was acquitted because of these two things. The jury never believed uh, the prosecution after that. Now to get into the prosecution is a whole nother world because of the, the two people who were, in the, who were in the driver's seat. Marsha Clark believed, and she regretted it after, as she said in her memoirs, uh, that uh, gender trumped race. And she brought black women onto the jury. The jury had one white person on it, by the way. The black women and Latino women did not go for the gender over race. Clark had made a mm -hmm. mistake and she wrote about it years later. She's then going every weekend to Big Bear. You can't make this up. With Christopher Darden, and they're both screwing their brains out, drunk out of their minds. They come into, they develop an affair. Uh, they're going away every single weekend partying, the two of them in, up in Big Bear. Uh, coming into the office on Monday, hung over and holding hands. This is who these this dream team is up against. Dershowitz said the other day that Christopher Darden was the worst affirmative action attorney he'd ever met. Uh, and he very rarely talks about affirmative action in a negative way because he's such a liberal. He, I was like kind of startled when he said that yesterday. He was on with uh, 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 Rob Schmidt's show on, on Newsmax uh, last night. And th the situation was... Darden had an opportunity to have OJ try on the glove in the hallway privately uh, before he did it in open court. And he was so arrogant that he said, not, not necessary. And he brought it in before the jury and the case was over. Uh, as, as he famously said, Johnny Cochran, if the glove doesn't fit, you must acquit. And this allowed OJ to say certain things to the jury while he was trying on the glove, trying to get in there. It clearly fit. But he was had the plastic gloves underneath it, and he was trying to squeeze into that. He had gained weight. The gloves had shrank. It's arthritis I mean, medicine and all that. A number of factors, but 
point was that Darden had the opportunity to try this not before the jury's eyes. And he said, nah, forget it. Let's just go. I always I always love that one. Um, you know, but the Marsha Clark, Christopher Darden uh, hookups were just sensationally insane. I had no idea what that. By the way, we do need to correct the record. It was Don Olmeyer who fired Norm MacDonald. Not and not ever saw. I do remember his Olmeyer. Oh, okay. So, right. so this chat was right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, so moving along, there were two. I don't even know where to go with this. There was a friend of mine named David Sheffield, uh, part of the Mississippi Mafia out here. Sheffield, of course, uh, famously worked at SNL, uh, which is why I was thinking of David Sheffield. He he was a uh, a writer at SNL and a producer of all the Eddie Murphy sketches and later uh, wrote the Eddie Murphy films. Um, <laughs> David Sheffield was in Musso and Frank's one night and OJ comes in. And he sits down for dinner, and David's at the bar with some friends. And he was a quiet guy, David Sheffield, from Mississippi. And he stood up and yelled, I do not drink with murderers, sir. My check, please. And everyone looked up, and he paid his check and stormed out with his friends. I was very proud of him, uh, uh, David, for doing that. But we had another friend named Joe Bosco. And I got to talk about Joe Bosco. I, there's a lot of stuff I'm involved with. And I never remembered this until yesterday. Joe Bosco was another M Mississippi writer. There was a Mississippi mafia out here of which I was an honorary member. Obviously, I'm not from Mississippi, but I hung out with these cats who are all from Mississippi in the film business and the creative business. One of them was Joe Bosco, uh, who was from Biloxi, a uh, really brilliant guy, great writer, total alcoholic, completely insane. I don't know if you have a picture of him. I, I sent you one yesterday. Maybe we could put it up. Um, Joe Bosco gets assigned one of the four seats by Judge Ito allowed in the case. And that includes Dominic Dunn, Joe McGinnis, a, a rare guy named Jeffrey Tubin, and Joe Bosco. And Joe Bosco is working on a book. Ostensibly, he's there's Joe Bosco. Um, he, uh, the late Joe Bosco, the late great uh, Mississippi Joe Bosco. He was living with Patrick Weathers, who I discussed in a previous episode, who was a friend of mine who was on SNL, who used to do Dylan impersonations. It's all about SNL today. Uh, his roommate was Patrick Weathers, uh, my old friend from SNL, and um, also lived here in Hollywood. So, Joe Bosco is one of the four book writers who gets a seat in the trial. The print people were rebelling against the book people because they felt these books would not come out for a year. Joe Bosco uh, wrote one of the only books at the time that said um, that OJ was innocent. And that book didn't sell, but it's a great book. Um, how uh, something about the prosecution screw up. I forget the title of the book. Um, by Joe Bosco. Anyway, Joe Bosco was kind of crazy and he was an alcoholic. And right before the trial, he dove into an empty swimming pool at night at a party and broke his neck. So he shows up at the trial with a neck brace on because he broke his neck diving into an empty swimming pool while drunk at night. Uh, that was Joe Bosco. Joe Bosco will later go to China after the trial. He'll become an English teacher in China. He will die in China in communist China. Uh, there was some controversy that he was supporting Taiwan. Uh, he went into surgery, did not come out. Uh, not really sure what happened to Joe Bo uh, Bosco. Uh, but Joe Bosco uh, is covering the trial and Joe Bosco becomes a witness in the trial. Now we're all freaking out because we're all watching this every day uh, because Joe Bosco's in the case. He's coming home at night and we're hanging out with Joe Bosco and we're watching it. It's so surreal. He gets called as a witness, invokes the California Shield Law, and says, I'm not giving up my sources. He was ostensibly writing for Penthouse at the time, but that was just the article that would lead to the book deal, which he did come out with the book. Uh, so he's working for Penthouse, writing these uh, articles that will become the book. So the they want his uh, sources, uh, the prosecution, and he won't give them up, takes the stand with his neck brace, and Judge Ito says, I agree with you. We're going to invoke the California Shield Law, and you will not be incarcerated. Uh, this has happened to Joe Bosco before in, in Mississippi in another case, another crime. Mm -hmm. he, he, he wrote a couple of big crime books. 
He also wrote a great book about the minor league Chicago Cubs team uh, the year before, where he, which is another book he wrote. Um, anyway, it just triggered. I hadn't thought about Joe Bosco in years. And I hadn't thought about these people in years. I hadn't thought about the OJ case in years. And you just wonder what happened to all these people who who went down that road. I mean, there's Robert Shapiro's long gone. Uh, uh, Dershowitz. Kardashian is, with, is gone. Kardashian. I mean, think about the people Effing involved. Jeffrey Bailey died. Um, Look what happened to Jeffrey Tubin. You see that little video I sent you with uh, OJ mocking Jeffrey Tubin when he got suspended by, by um, CNN for exposing himself? I mean, this this just I mean, there's so much pop culture around the OJ case. That elderly black woman who was a juror and said uh, we did this because of Rodney King, and mm -hmm. and the guy said you don't care, and she just smirked and said nope, nope. I mean, they. She said, how many people in the jury thought like you? She said about ninety percent. Are you I mean, included? Yes, there was one white juror. Is essentially what you're saying. Yeah, ninety yeah. percent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it took them 40 minutes to to vindicate him. And, and you you know, when the people uh, and then you've got this, Jesus Christ, you got the the Bronco on the 405, the slow speed chase. You've got Cato Kalin. I mean, that guy, the f most famous house guest in America who later is, uh, I don't know, celebrity big brother. He was on. Uh, I mean, let me just get back to Detective Van Adder because <laughs> Detective Van Adder. This is a couple of years later. Detective Van Adder is then retired. And I wake up one day, I'm living out in the valley with Legs McNeil, the famous writer who wrote a great book called Please Kill Me on the History of Punk Music that I totally recommend. Legs was working on a book. Uh, we lived together in the valley uh, way before it became uh, unhip. <laughs> I mean, we had, a, we had a place in the valley that was just party central. Anyway, I wake up one morning and in the dining room is this cop. And he's not a cop in, in the cop uniform. He's wearing regular clothes, but he reeks of cop. And I just go, you look familiar. And it hit me. It's Detective Philip Van Anna sitting in my living room. And Legs is interviewing him about the history of the LAPD and porn in the Valley in the 70s for his book that he was doing on, on, uh, on uh, porn. And it was so surreal to have seen this guy, the guy accused, of of framing O.J. Simpson sitting in my dining room, uh, you know, like at eleven o'clock in the morning. So I got to talk to Van Adder for a while. I didn't bring that up, but I we were talking about what Legs was talking about, uh, the history of the cops with porn in the Valley in L.A. Was this uh, before or after um, the art detective that you interviewed? Uh, this was way before. Yeah, this was way okay. before the art detective. But it's also. Uh, Van Adder was involved in so many different things. He was involved in the Roman Polanski case when Polanski was arrested. I mean, there was so much that Van Adder um, was involved in in LAPD history. Plus, he knew where all the bodies were buried, and 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 me and Legs were just freaking out. He ends up becoming, oddly enough, a deputy sheriff in a tiny town in Indiana where he owned a piece of land so he could retire. You know what I mean? Like he retired to this farm he bought sure. in a small town, Indiana, and just became the sheriff uh, and then died of cancer like in 2012, I think. But uh, by yeah, the way, um, Super Chat, I'm going to interject because it, uh, you you summoned Al. Mm -hmm. So Al, Al Gonzalez said, Mark is correct. I knew NYPD guys that would take home evidence or keep it in their yeah. lockers in violation of procedure. It's a fact. Thank you. I, I mean, all these things are facts. And and I've worked with cops before, you know, not Al, but I'm saying I've worked with cops as a reporter, you know, uh, and you learn a lot talking to cops. I've, I've drank with cops. I've hung out. I mean, I, I interviewed Bill Bratton when I lived in New York. And then I, there's the chief of police of New York, Bill Bratton. And then I interviewed him here when he's LAPD chief of police. I, I know cops. I mean, I don't mean bragging about it. I'm saying I know how they think. Uh, basically having interviewed them as a reporter so many times. But yeah, Van Adder took home the, the blood sample and uh, did something with it. And again, there was enough to convict, but maybe not with that incredibly stupid prosecution team. Now, there was a guy hiding in the back room. And that guy was the district attorney of Los Angeles, famously the father of a later mayor of Los Angeles. This is Gil Garcetti. Uh, the district attorney, the son will become the mayor of Los Angeles. The son will flee to India 
to avoid prosecution in one of the largest building trade scandals in Los Angeles history that has already jailed multiple city councilmen and is now knocking on his door. He's next in line. The deputy mayor is going to prison. Uh, he was convicted two weeks ago. Uh, a Chinese guy named Chang, I think it was like Henry Chang or something, uh, or Chan, he's going down. And Garcetti, uh, un not unlike the mayor of New York in 1950, uh, who fled to Mexico with the help of Truman uh, about, about when he was going to be indicted in 1950 in New York City. This is an old democratic trick to get people out of the country who were about to be indicted. I think we covered it on another show uh, when we were talking about uh, the mayor of New York uh, in 1950. But Philip Van Adder, um, we, along with Mark Furman, uh, will be remembered in history. Now, you got Judge Lance Ito, who thought he was going to go to the Supreme Court from this case. You've got Dr. Henry Lee, who makes national fame for the first time. Uh, with blood splatter analysis, Eric, if you remember. Uh, he will later become uh, involved in the John Benet Ramsey case. He'll be involved in the Lacey Peterson case, but he gets he gets his start uh, in the OJ case, Eric. Yeah, and also Michael mm -hmm. Bodden comes in. No, I know. I mean, it's just it's an amazing it's an amazing Hall of Fame list. Uh, yeah, there's Gil Garcetti was a DA. Uh, 1992 to 2000, um, he will then, Eric will be his son. Uh, Johnny Cochran, of course, Jeffrey Tubin gets his bones there. I mean, it's just an interesting, and I think he's played by Cuba Gooding Jr. in one of the different miniseries that came out, um, one of the better ones. Well, I think. Cuba... Doesn't Cuba What's have his own issues now? Or Cuba's got his own issues now with his, with 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 Diddy. Diddy. He may go down. <laughs> he may go be going down with the done Diddy. He done Diddy done something. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. But I, anyway, I, 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 I mean, it's that. just it's just everybody was like, "Where were you then when this when the verdict came? Where were you there?" Where, I mean, I haven't thought about this trial in, in years. Now he famously. Uh, will try to rob his own memorabilia at gunpoint to get it back uh, in Las Vegas. He'll be sentenced. He does about eight or nine years in prison. Um, yeah. He gets, right. And I mean, I, dude, I just boxed this guy out. But you think about the Naked Gun movies, Eric. You think about the Hertz TV commercials that he did. I mean, this oh, was no, one of was the most famous, famous. He, he was like the biggest celebrity sports star, star in history to that point. I had his poster in my bedroom, a Buffalo Bills poster. We all did. I mean, I had other football players, but I had an O.J. Simpson full-size poster in my bedroom as a kid. I mean, uh, one of the fastest runners I've ever seen. I think he did the 100 and under 10, uh, which is which is rare. And just one of the great running backs of all time um, in the Hall of Fame, uh, NFL Hall of Fame. And, and his Heisman uh, is still sitting at USC. Uh, so, uh, oh, oh, that was it, another Norm Macdonald joke, by the way. Uh, he, he was congratulating whoever won the Heisman that year. He said, that's something they can't take away from you unless you kill your <laughs> wife and a waiter. <laughs> and it was a well, I mean, like the, you know, how about writing the book, If I Did It? What about that whole uh, uh, spectacle? If well, I, I did I it. I interviewed his manager, and apparently he got paid cash for that book. Right. Because so they, Goldman uh, wouldn't get his get hands the, on it. Exactly. And, uh, wow. It was wow. ghost written, supposedly. Right, I'm sure. I'm sure. Anyway, just uh, thank God he's dead. Uh, long live the Queen. Um, these people deserve the the victims should be remembered more than O.J. Simpson. That's all I got to say. Despite the White House and this Haitian you lesbian, know, it's thirty years this year. Right. Years. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So. Wow. Interesting. Well, what was it? Um. So somebody joked on Twitter. I think Norm also did, did prior, but remember how OJ said, "I will spend the rest of my life oh, find, yeah. to find out who did it." Yeah, and, and so somebody said, "Damn it, he never was able to find out who did it." Right, that's right. And also, there's people making all kinds of jokes. Like, there's still plenty of golf courses to search around the world. Don't give up. I mean, it was just it, it spawned so much humor, uh, oh, gallows oh, humor. A Bronco, a Bronco hearse. Yeah, oh, that one God, Al Cowan. I mean, 
<laughs> There's so many weird things going on in that case with the maybe people were helping him. I don't really know. I mean, uh, dude, it was just so dark. The Bruno Molly shoes that left Did the footprints. Horror movie the convention shoes. autographs. If I don't. I, I don't. I don't know. I never heard of that. I never heard of that. To be honest with you, I, I hadn't either. But he, he wasn't known for his taste. <laughs> well, <laughs> speaking of sports, speaking of sports. Uh, All right. Speaking of sports, well, this is OJ Simpson's uh, day, but we'll move on to other sports. Uh, well, let big let day in sports. Guess. Okay. Let me see if I can guess what it is. It could it be? Oh, I got to share the screen again. I got frozen out. Okay. Uh, let's da -da 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 -da. boom. Share. Oh, Tony's ex interpreter charged with stealing $16 million from him, four times more yeah. than first time. You know, this is a, a case that's being tried in the press. They had a press conference yesterday, the prosecution out here, uh, federal prosecutors, that is. The kid turned himself in today uh, to the authorities, and he's looking at 30 years. And apparently what they're saying, and I, and I looked at the, um, the documents last night. I had a brief look at the documents of the, of the filing, and they're claiming that he, you know, because the question is, how did he get the money uh, if Otani is not involved? They're claiming that he was more than an interpreter, that he was almost, and this is the prosecution. The kid has not been charged. I mean, he's not stood trial yet. I'm presuming innocence until guilty. Uh, I think they're trying to bury the kid so he, uh, you know, cops a plea so they don't have to go to trial because yesterday they brought out machine guns, literally, in this press conference and buried, try to bury this kid. Um, they claim that he impersonated Otani on the phone uh, calling the bank for the wire transfers to be sent to the the bookie in Orange County, uh, and that it's sixteen million dollars. And he, you know, when he became his uh, interpreter in two thousand eighteen, he this is their claim. Now I don't know if they don't have to prove this in court. They claim that he opened up Otani's bank accounts. He guarded them from the the management and the sports industry that was around him that they didn't even have access to Otani's accounts. This whole thing seems far too much to believe that Otani has the biggest names in sports management, accountants, managers, agents, and yet this little interpreter is handling his finances. I, I just find this too much to believe combined with the massive investigation done by the feds that took 21 days, okay? It took three weeks to do the total investigation. They've now decided this kid stole all the money, gambled it. Uh, they've got some type of text messages they say might indicate he did this. He deceived the bank into uh, thinking he was Otani. And I thought to myself, Otani didn't speak English. Did this kid pick up the phone and talk to Chase Bank in Japanese, telling some guy on the other end in Japanese? Because if he spoke English to them, it's not Otani. You know what I'm saying, Eric? I, I was mean, did he, about the language. I, the, the language, of course. I'm saying, like, did he call up in English saying, yes, this is Shoei Otani, transfer $16 million to Joe Bag of Donuts down in Orange County? And there's no checks or balances. Okay. Forget about the, that. That's preposterous by itself. And again, I could be proven wrong. I'm just telling you it doesn't pass the smell test right now. What does his accountants do at the end of the year when $16 million is missing from his, doing his taxes, his accountants? He has mega accountants, Eric. $16 million is, where is it? I don't know. I don't know what happened. I don't know. He gets paid about 16 to $20 million from the Angels. He's at the end of his contract or starting his contract with the Angels. When this begins to happen, he's almost at the end of his contract. $20 million is about what he's making, or 20 to 25. 16 million of it is missing. No red flags, Eric? Nobody says, hey, Otani, I know you're not micromanaging your money, uh, but we have no record of 16 million. There's wire transfers going to Joe Bag of Donuts down in Orange County. You know anything about this? Oh, no, I don't know anything. I don't even speak English. It just doesn't, right now, does not pass the smell test. And I think they're trying to railroad this kid uh, to clean this mess up as quickly as possible. I think he's being railroaded. Should not as much, not as much as 
as Julio Urias, and you say, Mark, who is you, Julio Urias? I've never heard of this guy. You are right. That's right. <laughs> That's why I'm saying that. Julio Urias was the greatest pitcher the Dodgers have had in recent years. This kid was a phenom, came up at 19. I think he was 19 and three the fir first year. He is uh, about to be a free agent, one of the greatest pitchers in Dodger history, uh, an unbelievable six-pitch pitcher out of Mexico. Uh, has been charged with five misdemeanors, five misdemeanors. It's now been turned over to the L.A. city attorney from Gascon to the city attorney uh, to be charged with five misdemeanors that don't add up to anything. He was at this uh, soccer match with his girlfriend. Uh, the girlfriend gets upset with him because he's posing for photos afterwards with a bunch of girls, fans. And uh, she gets into a shoving match with him and he's arrested for this domestic dispute, which is just him and her shoving each other. He's charged with five misdemeanors, five. I don't know how they get that. Uh, and his career is over. He's done. He's done. He's banned, fired by the Dodgers. Same thing that happened with Trevor Bauer. Uh, he's as good as Trevor Bauer was, maybe better at the early stages of, of his career. Now also banned from baseball. Another Only an L.A. Uh, story that's not gone national yet. It will. Uh, Julio Urias, one of the best pitchers I've ever seen in my life. Um, banned from baseball also because of uh, some pseudo-domestic incident. So it, it happened the same time, same day as the Otani thing. So the Dodgers, um, just a Is lot a of weird. War, a war on pitchers? I, it could be a war on pitchers because it's, I mean, this crazy story is just three Otani's oh, a pitcher obviously uh Trevor Bauer uh who I'm hoping gets picked up by some team and now Julio Urias I mean wow wow believe all yeah, women and of course the girlfriend <laughs> the girlfriend doesn't want to press charges but in LA you can't do that uh so they do it for you oh lovely lovely yeah 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 well, uh, speaking of coddling uh, new generations, et cetera, I don't remember I, if I shared this with you, but I definitely put it on Locals. Scrabble has made a historic change what? in their game, making it less competitive <laughs> and more inclusive. Scrabble? Scrabble. Oh, I see what this is Obviously, going. they're mentally weak, too. I mean, oh my on. god! Oh my god! Poor, we, we, poor you know, we, we've gone from, and this started before the latest generation. Is there another the whole, level of Scrabble, like Scrabble Two or something, for the hearing? Well, apparently, impaired? it's two games. It's like a oh, okay. The, the, you could play a traditional Scrabble or like this oh, handicap oh, oh, Scrabble. Oh, yeah, they they have a, a a lovely name for it now, though. Um, what do they call? It? It's a no more scoring gameplay option. Oh my God! Did you see that Harvard reinstated standardized testing? They did. Well, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. They're trying to end their the attacks on them by going back to uh, standardized testing of students. Good. Except uh, you know now that Claudine Gaze have already you know promoted their way past it, yeah. she doesn't have to worry about it. <laughs> I'll tell you some other thing that scared the hell out of me last night. I saw this. Uh, you know. In 2021, 342 Chinese were arrested at the border. 342 at the border, Chinese Chinamen, uh, young Chinese, uh, doing maybe doing some evil doing. This year, I, 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 this year, I'm not the same military age this year. The 342, I thought, well, that's like a platoon or something. How many people? 342 is a lot of a lot of military age people. Uh, that was 2021. This year, uh, they have arrested 22,233 military age Chinese males at the border, an increase of 6,320%, Eric, uh, from the 342 to 22,233. And there are reports, reports uh, out of the border, south of the border, that they're taking target practice. Did you hear this? They've been uh, found to be taking a right. variant of it that was worse. And I want to say it was like from 2010 to like 2021, 
mm -hmm. it was like 960 Chinese. Total, total. Total. Yeah. And then 20, you know, the, the second one that you said in one year. Yeah, so 22,233 is the number of arrests. And I don't so. remember the exact number, what it was, but I think it was under 1,000, and it was like yeah. covering yeah, yeah, yeah. 11 yeah. years. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a ridiculous number. Yeah, I mean, they, you, this doesn't count the getaways. You know, this doesn't count the no, ones sure. who, right, who got in. I mean, if one out of five get caught, you're talking about 100,000 uh, who, uh, who are doing this. I mean, this is, yeah. and it, nobody seems to, I, I believe at this point you have to indict Joe Biden. He has to be indicted, not by this guy uh, uh, who is in the Department of Justice. Somebody, some attorney general of a state in, in Arizona or California or Mexico or Texas has to put on paper an actual indictment. It, it may not go anywhere. It probably won't. But there has to be a paper trail that he is going to be charged with in, uh, whatever you want to charge him with uh, and force the hand of this impeachment. This impeachment going after Mayorkas is absurd. It's absurd. A waste of time. They're never going to get two thirds of uh, the senators in the Senate to do this. What are they wasting their time? Go after Mr. 10 percent, Mr. Big, Eric. Right. No, I agree. Uh, and uh, I, I, I don't understand. I don't understand. What's that? I think Barnes was talking about that this weekend, too. They, they've got to knock this law oh, off. It's, they it's need ridiculous. to go to all it's these small, yeah, small town judges everywhere right. and just yeah. lay indictments, and they'll be like, oh, this thank is you. Oh, I just thank Remember, you. Uh, thank you. Yeah, you know, yeah I think that. it's about time. By the way, did you see Catherine Herridge and Cheryl Atkinson testifying yesterday before uh, 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 fantastic testimony about censorship in the media? Uh, big big tech, not big tech, big TV censoring, in this case, mm -hmm. CBS and NBC, uh, uh, specifically with the two of them, CBS, obviously, uh, Catherine Herridge being fired uh, by CBS and them t attempting or, or stealing her computers and files. And then, of course, famously before that, uh, Cheryl Atkinson uh, being eavesdropped by the government into her computers mm -hmm. and keystrokes and everything else. Uh, incredible. Both CBS, by the way. Both CBS, yeah. Um, obviously, Herridge was Fox before that and is now being kept out of jail uh, by Fox, but is being fined $800 a day for the avoidance of, of not giving up her sources, which is why I mentioned the Joe Bosco story with OJ earlier. The California Shield Law was invoked by Bosco, uh, and the Shield Law was also invoked by Bosco in a Mississippi case that he was involved in, but Judge Ito uh, honored it in the OJ case, Eric. Yeah, well, I mean, it'd be nice if somebody does because that that right there, it's like, well, it's not like they're going to go to jail. It's only a civil contempt. It's like, it's hundreds of dollars every damn day. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You yeah. eventually get bankrupt. You can't pay your bills. You're on your street. I mean, eight hundred a day every ten days. Uh, eight thousand dollars is twenty five thousand a month. So, uh, yeah. and she's not, and she's unemployed. Yeah. So, I mean, come on. It starts to get just ludicrous. All right, that so we got a new, we got a new, we got a new VP candidate who's been running around the border now. Uh, this, oh, uh, yes. this Chinese Irish chick named Shanahan, <laughs> uh, so who speaks transition from Chinese at the border to Chinese VP. Right, Chinese VP. Um, she speaks fluent Mandarin. Her father was an Irish psychotic drunk uh, who whatever he did, abused them and the family. The mother was directly from China, uh, spoke fluent Mandarin. She's got Mandarin Chinese language skills. Uh, she's linked to China, goes back to China all the times, uh, went to school in Singapore or something. Who knows? Uh, the fact of the matter is she reeks. And I mean, politically reeks. She doesn't reek. Maybe she reeks anyway. But uh, she went down to the border and they're embracing her like she's some sort of dignitary taking her on a tour of the border and everything else. I don't understand that. Uh, I'd like to get that tour when I go down there. But um, the, yeah, this woman apparently only has 27,000 followers on Twitter, uh, despite being a big tech Silicon Valley mega billionaire. She's got 27,000 followers on Twitter. I'm just going, that's kind of weird. You know what I mean? I thought she'd have 27 million or something, but it's only 27,000. Uh, that being said, I don't you judge her pay for, for that. 
I know, I know, I know. I thought, well, that's kind of weird. So anyway, so this entire campaign is, is like uh, so wide open for trolling. You know what I mean? Like he could just go on there, which I've been doing, saying, when is the next big rally? I want to take my whole family to support RFK Jr. And of course, there are no rallies. And I said this to Eric last week. Where are the Bernie Sanders level rallies of RFK Jr.? He just keeps he went on the twins podcast yesterday. Two guys who are twins. Uh, that's his that's the, the podcast. Hodge twins. I don't know. Hodge twins, right? Two black guys. No, no, no. These are white guys. Uh, the twins podcast. Oh. Uh, I think out of Minnesota or something. Uh, two twin guys, oh, white guys. Okay. Yeah, I don't know who they okay. were. But I'm saying this is the level of his campaign. And these people are saying, you know, on Twitter, they're saying, I'm going to vote for RFK. I'm going like, where? <laughs> where? This is already May. Uh, what is he on? The ballot in Utah? Where is this going to happen in the next couple of months? Where are you going to vote for your beloved RFK? Please tell me, because I'm a little confused as to what ballot, what state, what delegates he's going to get, what convention he's running. There is nothing. This thing is dead in the water. I'm telling you right now, this thing is dead in the water. He has no rallies. The biggest rally he had was 200 people. I mean, whatever you say about Bernie Sanders, he did have the thing stolen from him by Clinton. He had huge mega rallies, Eric, right? Uh, didn't he have 50,000 yes. people rallies just like Trump did? Maybe not that big, but yeah, he did. Uh, Ron Paul did before him. Right. And, um, the, the typical populist outsider candidate, which supposedly- Well, he doesn't, ha he doesn't have that. He doesn't have that. No, he doesn't. I, I mean, I no. just find it bizarre that these people are just tweeting every day on Twitter going, we're up by 32% in the favorability poll. We're going to win. And I'm going, like, what, what the hell are you talking about? Who cares about a favorability poll? Anyway, I'm glad I, you I just, finished. I, I, when you said right. up by thirty something percent, I was thinking, well, going from two percent to three percent is thirty percent, right? Or almost right. fifty percent. <laughs> I, I don't know, but then the, the ones who say they're going to vote for him, and I'm going like, where are you going to vote for him? Where, where, where what ballot? Are you gonna, well, he'll he'll obviously be on all fifty ballots. I'm going, yeah, in your dreams, in your dreams, he'll be on fifty ballots. Uh, yeah, I anyway, I just thought it was odd, but what I really I got into this weird. Well, I want to segue because you said twins, so uh, I'm, um, let's talk about twins. Oh yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll come back to RFK in a second. But these are my new favorite conjoined twins. I don't know if you have a picture of them. They're Latinas. Um, there's another group of twins that, yes, yes, this group. Now, what is going on with this two? God, they actually look like they're different ages, even. Right. Now, they party a lot, these two. I don't know if they know the other two uh, uh, that we showed a couple of weeks ago, but these two really are out there sexually. They're out there party-wise. They've embraced their conjoined twinness. Uh, they like to party like it's 1999. Uh, they don't even look like identical twins. They might have been conjoined of fraternal twins. Uh, what do you make How of this? How does that work? Well, like if you buy a drink, do they automatically get two? I mean, how, how do you figure out servings? I don't <laughs> know. I don't, dude, there's so many questions. Like, you mean a cover charge? How much do you pay to get in? How about that? Sure. That, an, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of options. You go to, I guess they go to ladies. How about a plane? Night, lady, you know, that's a good question, too. That's a very good um, question. I mean, they're not obese. I won't no, say no. They, they, they should get, very attractive. They, get two, they should get two seats, Southwest. Scroll down a little bit. I just want to see something there. Scroll down a little bit. I just and there might be another Ooh, picture okay. of them there. There you go. Okay, they look pretty attractive. The two of them. You could. It's a double date. Y yeah. Look at that. Wow. Very. Attractive. And apparently they go into, um, well, like how um, sex feels for them and things like that. So. Right. Right. Is this and a here's a guy. guy. This guy's dating both of them. Well, I mean, think about it. It's like, well, I can't help but have threesomes. Or wow, two man, and a half so, sums? So crazy. It's so the mind. Uh, it's not really three sums. <laughs> well, speaking of sexuality, I wanted to talk about segue into this. We'll go back to RFK in a second because I did want to go back to RFK. I noticed there's an inordinate amount of celebrity Nepo babies who have come out as trans. And it seems like it's about 800% higher than regular people. And uh, this thing here, 
we'll go through the list, Eric and I. This is just assembled recently. Uh, the amount of celebrities who have trans, this was triggered because this trans daughter or son of Ben Affleck and J-Lo came out in front of the casket of his dead grandfather to the applause. Yeah. Right, Eric? Am I, am I right about this? Yeah, it's like, really? Are you stealing the attention of the uh, funeral folks? Uh, well, uh, yeah, I, I think yeah, it's more yeah, than that. On. The funeral, the coming out party was being streamed live on Facebook. They didn't even care about the dead grandfather who's in a casket in back of them. That's what gave. That's what started my research going. How many of these celebrities have trans kids? And it turns out that there's tons and tons of trans kids. There he is right there. This is the one who came out. This is the uh, daughter or son or whatever of Ben Affleck and J-Lo. No, it's they, them. So they don't even go the whole way. They're coming out uh, as they, them. I just saw okay, it. but it looks like there's some gender thing going on there too. Visually, if you look at the kid, it looks oh, like oh yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Okay. Saying. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. The, the ultimate they them cop out, which is the whole. Oh, uh, that. I'm a yeah. Female today. I'm a okay. male tomorrow. Let's just go through a couple of these to see where we are, because I wanted to start with Ali Sheedy of the Breakfast Club, uh, standing oh, strong right. by her her queer kid who's transitioning. Then you've got Annette Benning and Warren Beatty, of course, two iconic actors. Uh, they have a trans son, Stephen Ira, uh, who has come out. The son's incredibly brilliant, says Annette Benning. Um, he was in the Paris Review. She's very excited about her trans son. Uh, then there's Billy Ray Cyrus, as proud of his queer daughter, Miley Cyrus. I didn't hear about that one. Um, That's then. New. But that was new. Well, uh, then there, oh God. Well, she wasn't queer the whole time. I think she was dating Thor or somebody like that. Right, but now she is. Now she is. Oh, okay. well, uh, there's, there Boos, there's Busy Phillips uh, from Freaks and Geeks, the Coca Town star, opened up, uh, is doing her best and uh, with about her non binary child, Birdie. There you go. That's uh, a they, them. Okay, that's a they, them. -er. Then you've mm -hmm. got Charlize Theron, who has a somehow has a black trans daughter. Uh, when her daughter was seven, she spoke about being a trans girl. Charlie Theron weighing in out of Australia. Number six is one I personally know, uh, which is Chaz Bono, uh, shown here early on in a photo with her Chaz mother. is an OG. Chaz, Chaz is, is an OG. I, I, re I recommend Chaz seeing there was a documentary called Becoming Chaz. Uh, I highly recommend. I think it was on A&E or the Discovery Channel or something, but I remember being at Thanksgiving dinner. I'll just digress a minute at Cher's house. And down at the end of the table, Chaz was talking about how they were going to cut a penis out of her forearm and give her a penis. And nobody cared what she was saying. They just said, pass, pass the potatoes down here. Nobody cares about your penis and your forearm. Uh, but that was Thanksgiving dinner at Cher's house. She's the well, most down. Cher, hold on. What's that? Cher's got her new boyfriend, too. Well, she's also uh, involved with uh, with 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 Elijah in court uh, yesterday about the conservatorship. Um, Elijah, yeah, yeah, Elijah showed up in court. I think he's going to win the case. He presented a, a, a very solid case as to why he should not be conservatored uh, by his mother, uh, uh, explaining to the court in very very detailed language how he doesn't need thirty thousand dollars a quarter to be a drug addict. He said there's millions of drug addicts who don't have uh, um, funds from their from their late dad in, in, in a bank. Uh, he made a very eloquent case. He said, my mother's been a depressive her whole life and she doesn't even manage her own money. She has a company that does that for her. Uh, anyway, I think Elijah is gonna be victorious in this case. Uh, that's the brother of Chaz, in case people don't know, from Greg Allman of the Allman Brothers. Um, this, oh my God. Okay, so okay. so this moving on. One. Which one is this? this? Is oh, this, hold on. Yeah, hold on. This is um, Jamie Lee Curtis and Christopher Guest. This is hold also on. one. This is Go be ahead. Weird. This, okay, because there's there's rumors about Jamie Lee Curtis already. I don't know if you've ever heard this. That she, I, I know, might be I know. one of those double Xer 
chromosome people or something? She denies but, that. And, and at a party one time, she lowered her her blouse to show me her breast. I didn't even ask to see that. She just showed me them. Um, sure. Christopher Guest, of course, famously from National Lampoon, uh, did every character there was. He was in Lemmings. I mean, uh, uh, a famous lampooner. It's, a, Spinal it's an tap, interesting right? Spinal Tap later. And then, of course, all the Christopher Guest movies uh, that people at home have seen. Uh, it's a strange couple, but they have a trans daughter named Ruby Guest, uh, who could be a guest at your home. Um, she was named the Advocates, Advocate of the Year in 2023 for her unwavering support of her trans daughter. Uh, whoa, I don't want to look at that picture. Um, Tori Spelling and Dean McDermott. Tori Spelling famously, wait, wait you jumped wait, to uh, Cynthia skip. Nixon? Oh, no, yeah, let me go yeah. back to Cynthia Nixon, because I did yeah, a movie with Cynthia. No, no, I skipped. That was my bad. I did a movie with Cynthia Nixon when she was heterosexual. That's how far back I go with Cynthia Nixon. She was hetero when I met her, and now and she became a lesbian and now has ran for governor of New York and has a transgender son named Samuel Joseph Moses. Okay, uh, this is from 2018. Also very proud of Samuel Joseph Moses called Steph, or Seth. I take that back, Seth. Uh, graduated college this month, and she salutes him, uh, marking Trans Day of Action uh, by sporting her son. Okay, <laughs> that's a great one. Uh, Tori Spelling and Dean McDermott, uh, they're divorced, but they've raised two queer children together. Uh, McDermott's son and Spelling's stepson, Jack, came out as gay at the age of 17. Uh, I don't know if this is, there's no trans here, but it's just two queer sons. So I don't know how that made the list. Uh, whoa. I think Tori Spelling famously um, announced their divorce on the first episode of her podcast, and he didn't know. It was like right, a, but she's oh, been famous. She, she, she's I been famously, she's been famously living in the desert in a Winnebago, claiming not to have any money. Uh, this has been going on for months in L.A. The storyline of Tori Spelling living. She was evicted from the house she lived in. Nobody knows what happened to her money. She was living out in the desert in a tent in a Winnebago. Just a crazy, crazy story. Not as crazy as Eugene Levy, um, who was in Schitt's Creek, American Pie, Best in Show. But you skipped right. again. Did who did I skip? People, Gabrielle, Dwayne. I don't really know them. I, you know, I, I, I okay, don't so really. I, it's Gabrielle Union and some other. Um, I don't really know these guys. Uh, Dwayne Wade. Okay. So back but I do know who Eugene Levy is. Uh, and a very speech from very funny guy, SCTV, to people who remember uh, SCTV out of Canada. Uh, he has a terrific gay son named Dan Levy, who looks just like him, oddly enough. Um, Eugene played a supportive father in some show called Sh Up Shits Creek, or Shits Creek, rather. Um, and then we move on to this couple i, I, I don't have know to, i have to say though mark this is such a mis misleading deal because i'm like yeah what's what's wrong here he's not trans it's like oh he's just no gay. i know there's a there's, uh, right. no, it's and, like it, there's these degrees it's like nah, nah it's i like, don't count that it's one it's like the gay people it. should be tossed off the list or something yeah i know like, i don't, I don't know how they how they wiggle their way in there there's a guy uh, named colin motry a canadian actor we're gonna have to ask viva about this when we give the viva of the year award in West Palm Beach on the 18th of May. Canadian actor, comedian, largely known for his show, Whose Line Is It Anyway, uh, has is a fully supportive of his trans daughter, Kinley, shown here. I guess that's the mom on the right. Kinley looks like there needs to be some more work done. Maybe it's transition means they're still tran transitioning. Um, Mokri replied to the trolls, my thoughts and prayers to your body for losing its mind. And souls so tragically. I don't know what that means. Um, and that's a burn. I, I, I love that when they go burn. It's like <laughs> okay. Then what Jennifer Lopez. Saying? Jennifer Lopez, who we mentioned um, before, she has a, has a support for a child Emmy, including when the two performed together at Dodgers Foundation Blue Diamond Gala. Uh, is this the same kid as the this earlier is... one? And that's not with Ben Affleck, uh, yeah. right? This is a different. No, kid. so Ben's got it both ways. He's got he's, it with yeah. his ex-wife and his new wife. Congratulations! Holy, ben. holy cow! Tell him what he's won, Bob. Uh, Leave Schreiber and Naomi Watts, number fourteen, coming in with a, coming in hot and heavy. 
uh, trans daughter named Kai, 2022, Kai's 14th birthday, woke up and said, I'm trans on her 14th birthday. Knew everything by then. Uh, couldn't wait. Had to transition immediately. Uh, mm -hmm. mm. Okay, That's Magic Johnson. Blockers are for. Magic Johnson's kid. I saw Magic Johnson's kid at the game one night. That's Magic Johnson's kid. Um, holy cow. I, when I was at the game, he was sitting in front of me. And he stood up, and and it was a little earlier than this. Um, uh, it was definitely a work in progress. Uh, but no, yeah, there's just a thing gay. So um, it's just this well, it's debatable, outfit. right? Because she he had a pocketbook. He was dressed like a woman. He was wearing a one piece skirt. He had on high heels. You tell me. Had on earrings, makeup. Uh, sitting in Magic's box, down below me. And I went, holy cow, and looked just like Magic Johnson. And he's also hey, like I'm six ten. I'm as confused as he is. Right. He's also like six ten. So it's when this guy enters a room, <laughs> uh, you know it's it's somebody big. Well, just uh, that he, get, he's wearing full ahead. heels at six ten. Six ten. So. Uh, Marsha <laughs> Gay Harden. But, so, but it's over seven foot. <laughs> uh, Marsha Gay Harden coming in hot and heavy. Uh, uh, supports LGBTQ. Uh, I don't know what she's got going on. She has uh, non-binary. Oh wait, no wait more. Second. Hold on. No, no, she, no, 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 no. She's collection. got three of them. She's got three. It's a collection. Yes. My eldest child is non-binary. My son is gay. My youngest is fluid. We've got an entire situation here. They, she lives in Glad headquarters in West Hollywood, apparently. Okay, I guess. Uh, Sade. I love Sade. One of the greatest singers of all time is also the great mother to her trans son Isaac. 2019, Isaac comes out. Uh, wow, thank you for fighting for me to complete the man I am. Thanking his mother, Shard. Is that a picture? Oh, yeah. I, Isaac actually could pass. I mean, honestly, if I saw them in a yeah. restaurant, I'd be confused. Don't forget Marlon Wayans. I forgot about the Wayans brothers. Recently okay. announced that he has a transgender. This crosses racial boundaries. Um, of course. His next comedy special. Will be something to do with that, I guess. I don't know. He's got uh, some. The kid's going to get woven in there. Number nineteen, Sally Field. You love me. You really love me. Uh, Two thousand sixteen. One of the OGs. She had advice for other parents of gay children. She has a gay son. This doesn't even count. That doesn't. Yeah, I, count. I agree. I think the gay should be tossed. How, okay. How about the legendary Sigourney Weaver? You saw her. In, in 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 Ghostbusters with Bill Murray, uh, Alien, of course, the great star of Galaxy Alien. Galaxy Quest. Galaxy Quest. Oh my God, was she great in Galaxy Quest? Hot. Look, so hot. hot. So hot. Uh, she, her only child, Char. Char, like Char. I don't know. Char. Char like Char. <laughs> no, but it's Char. C H A R. I is non-binary in 2022, saying that being a mom is absolutely the most important thing in her life. They are non-binary i think maybe she has more than one no she only has one child no no right? no no that's what i'm saying oh that's, they that's, that's, they they oh thank you come on keep thank up you. keep up keep up no no Char i was just Charlie jumping over yeah oh yeah. my god they are non-binary i thought she had more children but she's saying they the kid is they right that that oh is it the, they them that's the new oh. game all right um, where it's here's whatever. my so take on here's we're my all take caught on up thing. for now we had a whole discussion on this thing last night in my house Here's my take, and I'll, I'll just give you my hot take on this thing. There's two there's two avenues here. One is the fact that these are the Nepo babies of celebrities and that they could never achieve the celebrity status of their parents, so they become instant celebrities by coming out and transitioning. Yeah. That's my first hot take. I, I never thought about this. The second hot, there's three hot takes on it. The second one is they have, the parents have the money to do any surgery they want. They could not be turned down because of the political climate. So it's a threefold uh, reasoning for the Nepo baby. They become instant mm -hmm. celebrities. The parents can't turn them down. They have to embrace them. Because uh, I remember when Cher, when it first happened, she did not embrace Chaz when that first happened. There was a lot of controversy when Chaz uh, was transitioning. Cher did not embrace it. And she was maligned by Glad. And she then transitioned herself politically to embrace it. And I'll tell you something else. I remember well, back being then, in a Mark back then it was not right. like, right. I mean, right. It went from totally unacceptable socially to being celebrated in some circles. It's like, they've okay. got to the point that they deserve I'm an saying, award. 
Right. That's why it's 800 percent higher in the celebrity community than it is in the mainstream community, because sure. there's there's no bells and whistles when you do it in Indiana. There's no money to do it mm -hmm. in Indiana. And your parents are not going to embrace you in Indiana. Uh, here yeah. it's right. And I'm saying that's why it's a celebrity thing only for the most part. You know, I remember when Chaz, I was in a men's room uh, taking a leak. Standing up at a urinal and Chaz was in back of me and, and she said, uh, you know, that's my dream. I go, what? To do what you're doing. I go, what? Standing up, taking a leak. I go, all right. And we all have dreams. And she said, my mother won't give me money for the Bosnian goat balls that I want to buy. And I said, how much are they? She said, $53,000. I said, well, you know, you got to draw the line somewhere, Chaz. Now, I don't know if she got the goat balls or not out of Bosnia, but Cher was still wrestling with her over this stuff. These celebrities are not wrestling with their kids. They're paying full freight to get everything done, Hunley. I, I, maybe I'm wrong, but I almost want to differentiate Chaz because she was so... No, no, whatever. You, it was right. so long ago that that's why like, I'm mentioning that one. That's why I'm doing it. Yeah, no, Chaz yeah. was an OG and 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 fought the battles before these other kids have. Uh, but I'm just telling you, I was there at the time, yeah. so I'm just giving you my own, uh, you know, anecdotal information of what it was like it, back then. Is there a parallel with addiction and celebrity kids, too? Not really, because they, I mean, they do get high because they can't live up to their parents. This trumps it. And I'll tell you something else. The reason I keep showing those conjoined twins is because that's the new trumping of transitioned kids. These conjoined kids, you're going to see people, I'm predicting this right now, faking it on, on media, on social media. Oh, thank you. They, okay. thank you. They, are you hearing it here okay. first? Because nobody can do this. These kids who are conjoined are the new transitioned kids. They're bigger than the trans kids. And they're going to try to fake this now with photos and different uh, AI that Hunley uses all the time. Why That's not? Well, I, I know mean, AI is I already know. doing it with hands. So. No, no, no. They're going to they're going <laughs> to do Trump this with this. AI and they're going to be outed like uh, Millie Vanilli. You're going to see conjoined twins being Millie Vanilli. Uh, my prediction, you heard it here first. Oh, wow. All right. Go back well, to anyway, uh, let me go back to RFK because uh, I, 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 this is yeah. very important. This is really odd and I don't know what to make out of it. So I'm just going to say this. Um, 1968, RFK was uh, killed in the ambassador ballroom here in Los Angeles. The assassin mm -hmm. who, who didn't shoot him was Sirhan Sirhan, but Sirhan Sirhan was arrested. In the pocket of Sarah Serhan famously shoots Paul Schrade in the head with the first shot, my friend Paul Schrade from the United Auto Workers. Uh, he then shoots everyone else, and none of the bullets hit RFK, as proven by uh, the sure. coroner, uh, Thomas Noguchi. So that's that's been fairly well established by everyone. However, what people forget is, uh, whether it was MK Ultra or not, in his pocket, in Sir Han's shirt pocket, was an article from the LA Times saying RFK uh, to give 50 phantom jets to Israel when elected president, okay? That was the motivation for the shooting uh, by Sirhan Sirhan, that RFK was going to give 50 phantom jets to Israel, and he had no Secret Service protection at the time, RFK, uh, at the time he was assassinated. The, the reason for Sirhan's assassination, given by Sirhan, was the phantom jets that he was going to give to Israel. Cut to today. RFK Jr., has no Secret Service protection. He's supporting Joe Biden's sale of 50 F-15 fighter jets to Israel to this day. Hamas and the Palestinians are going crazy around the country. I fear that they may intersect with RFK Jr. at some point for the same issue that a Palestinian uh, attempted to kill his father. Now, that's odd. That is freaking odd. Both of them no secret service, both of them about jets to Israel, uh, uh, both of them in contentious situations involving Palestinians today uh, who are denounced. Yeah, wow. I just wanted to get that out on the table before, and hopefully it doesn't happen, uh, before it might happen, because this, this, the similarities are breathtaking. They're breathtaking. It hit me last night, and I was going to call you on the phone, but I was just like going, this is absurd. 
I mean, the, the, the similarities between his father and him, both in Los Angeles, we've got crazy Palestinians and Hamas people running around L.A. all day and night now. It's completely out of control. He has no secret service. His father had no secret service. Uh, uh, there's 50 jets for Israel uh, by the by the Biden administration. Looks like it's going to go through whether you support Israel or not. Um RFK Jr. supports the sale of the 50 uh, F-15 fighter jets to Israel. And he, his father famously said on television, which they people indicated that Sirhan had seen this as part of his motivation. Again, Sirhan did not physically pull off the event, but I'm saying physically he was there and was arrested with the article mm -hmm. in his pocket, two articles, uh, one from another newspaper, both about the, uh, uh, the phantom jets to Israel by the uh, RFK future administration if he was elected and got the democratic nomination which many pe people believed he would have um i just found that to be fascinating eric yeah i, I mean what I, a bizarre piece of odd history repeating itself if it does totally agree um i wanted to share this tweet from uh, our friend viva fry who i'll be seeing tomorrow night with barnes okay um it, this is a great Really nice, um, succinct breakdown. It's amazing to appreciate who are the players in the Trump prosecutions. So he's got all the pictures here. Wait, you're, so, you're, gonna, this, you're going back to this now? Okay, let's go. Yeah, why not? I don't care. Uh, porn star Stormy Daniels, convicted perjurer Michael Cohen, convicted extortionist Michael Avenatti, adulterer and perjurer Fannie Willis, adulterer and divorce fraudster Nathan Wade, a corrupt pervert judge, nipple judge Arthur Ing Ingoron. Nipple judge. Ingoron. Nipple judge. Nipple judge, corrupt judge with family ties to prosecution, one per child. Crazy old pervert who fantasizes about grapes and named her cat Vagina T. Fireball, E.G. Oh, I, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, E.G. Carroll. Prosecutor who has been credibly accused of international extortion schemes, Jack Smith. Uh, corrupt cor uh, Soros-funded prosecutor, Alvin Bragg. Corrupt prosecutor who campaigned off targeting Trump, Letitia James, and Fannie Willis. If you don't understand well, the, 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 that the ahead, criminals man. are in charge, you are a moron and a <laughs> Well, the, the Avenetti support of Trump is just breathtaking. I mean, from federal prison. I mean, dear God, coming out and saying you can't do this to Trump. Uh, this is a former attorney. That's one of those, please Trump. don't help. I'd be like, please don't help me. You, you just go <laughs> the fuck away. Please don't help me. So, well, this this was, he was going to be the next Democratic nominee for the presidency, according to CNN. Oh, I know. I mean, the Avenetti should be a movie. I mean, I'm sorry. That story of Avenetti's rise and fall, uh, at least a documentary, but definitely has feature film on it if you found the right actor. Um, I don't know, like an early Michael Chiklis or someone. But, I mean, that guy's story is just incredible. I mean, eventually he's going to get out, I presume. Yeah, and I've got one another one in our on running narrative about um, abusive women. Um, oh, Alyssa yeah, Ann yeah. Zinger, who posed online as a 14-year-old girl to meet and do things to a teenage boy, has been arrested again in Tampa, Florida. She was first arrested in November for allegedly engaging in at least 30 bad acts with at least one middle school student between the ages of 12 and 15 and sending explicit videos to several more on Snapchat. And is that not like the this like creepy handmaid's tail looking handcuff weird? Yeah, that's picture? a weird photo. Yeah. I mean, they just won't stop. I'm telling you, uh, again, this may not be prevented, but cameras in the classrooms will intimidate a lot of these young female teachers. Uh, a lot of them are young. They're under 25. Some of them mostly under 30. Uh, most of them marry. I don't know if she's a teacher. I don't know if she's a teacher, though. I think she's just a weirdo. I think she might have had some teacher credentials, but uh, I think the cameras would help to intimidate, in my humble opinion. I know, I, I totally agree, but I I, I just kind of like squatters, squatters and um, others. But let's get some uh, super chats down. Okay. We've got the great Dick Dickerson gifting 10 more America's Untold Stories memberships. Dickerson on the much. board, coming up on the big board. I do appreciate it. And by the way, folks... <laughs> When we get demonetized, those memberships still get to us, at least 70% of them. And mm -hmm. Super Chats do get to us, things like that. Uh, knock on wood, this has not been demonetized yet, but as of oh. late, 
YouTube they keep, is they let do the it show after go the all show. the way to the end. Yeah, 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 yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm sitting there uh, doing the locals after party, looking, refreshing. Okay, it's green. We're doing the locals. It's green. It's green. Twenty minutes later, boom, yellow. Yeah, it's because uh, because Billy and Trans headquarters saw it. Yeah, I know. Uh, I'm surprised we're still green, but well, that's yeah, actually wait until it. it's over. Uh, Pasha said, "Nerd question: Non-binary plug USB C." That's Could funny. Be. I'm not Could even be. a tech it, guy, and I find you, that you funny. can put it in both directions. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even. A... <laughs> By the way, uh, uh, if people want to watch, it... people want to watch something this weekend. There's only two episodes out so far. I think they come out on Mondays. They drop on HBO. This the history of Synanon. Uh, directed by Rory Kennedy, the sister of RFK Jr., who was in the stomach of Ethel when the shooting by Sirhan and Thane Eugene Caesar took place. This is an odd segue that I'm making, but supporting the Synanon documentary simply because there's so much footage that she secured for this documentary uh, episodic for HBO. Uh, it comes out on Mondays, but two or three of them are up there already. Uh, if you want to take a look at them I, over the I'm weekend, that because Synanon's an interesting cult. It started out, yeah. from what I understand, as a legitimate organization oh, yeah. that really did oh, help oh. people and just. Wait, like, wait do you see the show? Wait <laughs> do you see what happens? Wait do you see what happens in this thing? Very interesting. Very interesting. It might have been the beginning of the 1960s. This group. It might have started, this might have been the the acorn of the birth of the 60s as we know it. So, Good times. oh, I highly recommend it. What is it saying? Bruno Magli shoes and murder. Interesting. All right. I didn't know what kind uh, of shoes. Packer Jack, Jack, what did OJ and Jack Ruby have in common? Bruno Magli shoes and murder. That's pretty good. I didn't, I didn't know that Ruby wore Bruno Magli shoes, but I think I might have heard that. Somewhere. I don't know. It's a guess. Yeah. That's a weird one. Uh, also, as long as we're giving recommendations, I'm going to check out this baby reindeer on Netflix. Uh, excuse me? Anyway, I'm getting back. Let me get back to my recommendations. There's a new episodic on uh, Netflix called uh, my Baby Reindeer. That's okay. That's all right. Uh, called Baby Reindeer, and it's about a Scottish comic who buys a cup of tea for some uh, uh, girl who is crying, and she becomes his stalker. Uh, this is an episodic on Netflix. Apparently, it's gone viral now. I'm going to check it out this weekend. I uh, haven't seen it, so I can't endorse, but it's one of the hottest things on Netflix right now about a stalker of a Scottish stand-up comic. Okay. Uh, I'll just say this. I have a, the, uh, I guess this um, Pfizer, right, um, the let, Pfizer let me court. Keep going through oh. these as best oh, I can. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Can I talk about the Pfizer court or what do you want to do? Oh, he's got something else over here. Good logic needs a processor in order to get an egg jet. I don't know. I'm having is. internet issues. I'm trying to. Oh, okay. Should I keep talking or what should I do? Okay, so the Pfizer bill apparently is passed, the re upping of the Pfizer Act. Um, Pfizer? Yeah. And the Pfizer court, I was 112 to 212 to 212. Uh, I think was the vote. I don't know who was the tiebreaker. Maybe, uh, maybe some non-MAGA person. But there was, seems to be 86 Republicans who voted in favor of the restoration or the re-upping of the Pfizer court uh, today or yesterday in this vote, which was highly disturbing. I think they should take the 86 Republicans and banish them from the party. Uh, this idea of forming a MAGA party, uh, I believe that they should kick out the Republicans in the Republican Party and ban them, cut off their money now that Trump's daughter, stepdaughter, uh, daughter-in-law uh, is now running the RNC. I believe they should cut off all money to everyone on these lists who don't vote accordingly. I also believe that to get funding, 
you should sign have to sign a manifesto of votes that you'll have to take in the Senate and the House and not go against the party line. Uh, I know these are radical ideas and I just got here, but I believe that these can be enforced through financial contributions coming out of the RNC. The RNC should have been taken over uh, day one. Uh, LBJ took over the DNC as soon as he got in power. He put one of his cronies. Uh, usually the party apparatus is run by one of the closest cronies you could get. It's a do nothing job but you don't want it to go against you uh, like uh, uh, McDaniel was doing against Trump. Uh, apparently she's out of work now because MSNBC is not even going to hire her. So I think she's suing them. She's suing NBC uh, for some sort of a hiring uh, malpractice or something. I'm not sure what that's about. Uh, but I think they're going to have to start forcing out these Republicans who are voting against the party and not form a MAGA party, but for, force them out into independent status, strip them of their committee chairs, uh, strip them of their seniority. Uh, not Both parties don't really have the same seniority uh, rules, by the way. I think the Republicans adhere to it or the Democrats. I remember this uh, when Robert Kennedy became a senator out of New York. He had no seniority whatsoever. I think it was 99th out of 100. And he had to wait his turn. I think the Democrats have, have since done away with this. Uh, he had to wait his turn to do anything in the Senate, being the 99th senator uh, out of 100 uh, back in 1964, which is one of the reasons he could not wait to get out of the United States Senate and, and run for the presidency, which he dawdled about uh, until he saw the New Hampshire primary uh, uh, that LBJ only won the New Hampshire primary, but I by I think seven percentage points over Eugene McCarthy. This triggered the run by RFK Jr.'s father, uh, RFK Sr., uh, who was the campaign manager for his brother, uh, uh, JFK. By the way, people don't realize that. And his campaign manager was EMK. Uh, interestingly enough, keeping it in the family, just among the campaign managers. So, you know, I came up with a phrase for the Republicans, and this is, I got this from Gold in My Ear. Gold in My Ear famously said, the Palestinians will never miss an opportunity to miss an opportunity. And this was after negotiating with them for months and years. And every time they went to sign an agreement for a two-state solution, the Palestinians would walk away. And she famously said, uh, the Palestinians or Arafat and the Palestinians never miss an opportunity to miss an opportunity. <laughs> I think that um, the Republicans, uh, they will do anything. This is a quote. You could take this where you want it. The Republicans will do anything to avoid doing anything. This is my new quote about the Republicans, similar to the uh, gold in my ear quote about the Palestinians. Uh, they will do anything to avoid doing anything, the Republicans. And you could take that to the bank. This is a party of the status quo who sits there and avoids any, any kind of rocking of the boat. They will vote, uh, you know, any way that will, whoa, that will keep the machine going and any way not to ruffle the uh, uniparty feathers. It's very strange. And I think we need a, um, a manifesto about funding out of the RNC to uh, make these people do the bidding of the people who should be running the party or hopefully will be running the party. Sounds great. Um, obviously, I'm having <laughs> issues where I am. All right. Yeah, it's cool. You. It's cool, bro. It's cool. All right. No harm, no foul. All right. So let me get through Super Chats, though, because people actually paid to play here. Um, I just, Who's stopping I'm, you? <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Karen Vaughn. Uh, good logic needs. Um, I, I wouldn't know who to recommend. He probably knows as many or more, more attorneys in uh, New York than I, I do. I, I'm just guessing. But thank you. Uh, Dick Dickerson said, one of the recently interviewed jurors on OJ, yeah, we talked about that earlier, how she said that she was, well, essentially, she was perfectly fine with uh Well, if I can interject on, on this thing, it's absolutely correct. But they, there was, uh, the, the footage originally went to KTLA here in LA, the Rodney King beating footage. The first five minutes of the footage had Rodney King throwing the officers around like King Kong in a movie, lifting them up and throwing them around like ragdolls because he was jacked out of his mind. 
That mm -hmm. footage came into KTLA, and the first five minutes of it was King literally beating the shit out of these cops. The producer, KTLA News, famously told the editor to cut out the front end of that footage. And the editor said, that's going to lead to a lot of trouble. The producer said, don't worry about it. I'll take responsibility for it. Cut out the first five minutes of the Rodney King beating and only showed what you saw on the TV that was run throughout L.A., leading to possibly $4 billion in damages, multiple deaths, tons of destruction. The producer and the editor won Emmy Awards for doing that. And the reason I mentioned the footage being cut out and the damage that was done was in the trial of the LAPD officers, the reason they were acquitted was they subpoenaed the full footage of the Rodney King incident with Rodney King at the top of it, with the five minutes restored, and the jury acquitted the officers because of seeing the full footage of the Rodney King incident, that the black juror, as described by this uh, super chat person, is referring to that this was payback for Rodney King. This never would have happened if they showed the full footage of the Rodney King video. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, that's a, another argument for body cameras and all the footage, you know, for the cops and everything. It's like, oh, this was way before that, obviously. This no, I know, I know. Yeah. I mean, that was the first time that was really done. Uh, the glove fiasco reminds me of that Oh, Henry candy bar heiress that got acquitted years later in a similar manner. I don't remember that. That I don't know. Candy bar heiress. Um, oh, Henry? Yeah. Babe, Babe Ruth? Baby Ruth? Uh, I think I've heard of Oh, Henry as a candy bar, but I, I, I don't know. No, no, I've heard, I, I've heard it. I don't know the heiress to the Oh, Henry murders or whatever that was. Yeah, I'm not. I'm but not thanks sure. for the super chat, Petey. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Bob Devon, you guys rule. Love your show. Well, thank you. Thanks, Bob. And then here, Bob Devon again. Finally found out how to send you guys sugar. You guys are the best. Well, thank you. Um, oh, wait, what? Daniel Patrick, FYI, Red Bar is watching your stream live, claiming he's about to show leaked docs exposing your foot fetish. Hope you'll respond to these accusations. What foot fetish? Who's got a foot fetish? Uh, Tarantino has a foot fetish, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, so did, so okay. did that guy. Um, there was a guy on um, the, the documentary series about the producer of the Nickelodeon shows. And he had a foot fetish. And um, there's some interesting uh, uh, people involved in this thing who've grown up from those Nickelodeon early shows. Uh, but the guy, the producer, big, the big guy, um, as a has a foot fetish, and that's part of the uh, theme of the episodes. I don't know where he's getting that. I've heard of Red Bar. I think he does um, like response videos to Joe Rogan stuff or something. I, I, don't I have know. no, I, I have no idea. Um, maybe somebody different. I don't know. Uh, Stephen McMahon, Mark, please do some Ruth Payne, perhaps telling your kids about her flick with Marina. Uh, maybe another time. We'll get we'll get to her. We'll get to her. She's always a subject in the future. Yeah, she, uh, she's not going to go away. All right. So Jamie Booth said, "Chaps, please, could you do an episode on Don Rumsfeld and Dick Cheney's rise to power? Their memoirs make them sound like saints." Well, it's going to sure. come up. Thank you. It's going to come up in the um, in the Watergate stuff because they the two of them become the chief of staff. Two they had two different titles, but they were both essentially the chief of staffs for, for, for uh, President Ford. Uh, they come in on the Ford bandwagon when uh, Nixon uh, resigns from office. Those two men rise to power with uh, President Ford, and they will be featured at one point in the episodes when we get into Nixon and Watergate. Hmm. Uh, let me see. How do you get attention? This is PD Cat. California, I guess. How do you get attention when you're the kid of an attention-seeking celebrity? Come on, us trans. Yeah, right. This, this is saying. my. That's what I'm saying. I, I mean, it just hit me like a ton of bricks the other night. That it's not attention. They become. In, keep in mind, this is a twofold problem. Eric mentioned the drug addiction. 
a lot of them become drug addicts because they realize or abuse drugs and, and have problems with growing up as an adult uh, because they realize quite early on, A, their parents may be emotionally stunted, but B, and narcissistic, but B, they're never going to achieve the status of their parents or parents. And that can be very depressing to a kid who has a super celebrity parent. You're never going to make it. Go talk to Tom Hanks kids, Colin Hanks and those kids. There's plenty of celebrity kids that I know who have suffered this and have ended up with addiction. And I'm just talking about the ones in addiction. Uh, I think these people becoming trans is a way to become an instant celebrity and conquer this entire mess in one move. All right. Um, Joshua Turnage. Mark, tell us what evidence you have that Biden will announce he will not seek re-election. When will it happen? I'm suffering from Biden fatigue. No, no, I don't have, this is just it's speculation. I, I don't have it's speculation, right? My evidence. I, I just, I'm seeing it for what it is and knowing that uh, they're going to look at the polls and they're going to wait as long as possible. This is just democratic politics 101. They're going to wait as long as possible. Look at the polls as long as possible. Uh, and if the polls don't change, if they continue to decline and they continue to run their matchup polls against Trump, they continue to see the uh, declination in, in the battleground states, they're not going into the burning uh, fire. They're going to make a move and they're going to make a move as close to the as close to the nomination process, which would be in July in Chicago, which I believe is going to be infiltrated by Hamas supporters, which is going to be wonderful. Uh, even when what's his name was testifying yesterday, the FBI director in the background were the were the people with with blood, bloody red hands for for the Hamas protest. It had nothing to do with any of this, but they get they're apparently allowed in to every single hearing uh, with fake blood on their hands. I don't know. How do you get into these hearings? I guess you have to know somebody in the Democratic Party to get in. But I believe uh, they're going to wait as long as possible to literally a week or two before the uh, actual convention, because the convention has some legality to it. And there are super delegates and there are voting things that go on and whoever they choose. And I, I believe that Newsom would be the legitimate uh, heir apparent, as Biden himself has said, uh, that they would keep uh, uh, Kamala Harris in the position she's in and then put Newsom in the top slot and have them vote on it. And I believe that they can have super delegates do their bidding and do whatever they want. Uh, and that's the model that I see. You know, if he if he doesn't get replaced, then he's going to run straight through and try to avoid having debates with Trump, uh, which would be a disaster. Obviously, yeah. Um, Packer Jack, Mark's next book should be titled The Men Who Stare at Goat Balls. That's funny. Um, they, they do have these, one of these things they have, um, deep cheese balls or something, goat cheese. Oh, goat cheese balls. They actually have that at, uh, at whatchamacallit, uh, uh, the, the restaurant on Robertson that is featured in Vanderpump Rules. Uh, uh, goat cheese balls is a real delicacy over there. Lovely. Uh, let's see. Trey Ellswick, AUS saves USA. Film at 11. Film at 11. Yeah. Uh, Pamela Clifton. Hello, guys. Happy Friday. Hey, Pamela. Hello. Uh, JG is a new member. And then PD was saying it was a joke. The O. Henry Harris had, or Harris had a bra that didn't fit on Seinfeld. If it doesn't oh. fit, you must have quit. Oh, okay. Well, I, di I didn't know that. That's okay. That's funny. No, Seinfeld. I, don't I don't remember that episode. I know that George's father was a, a bra salesman and that Jerry's father used to sell uh, raincoats, hmm. which is kind of weird. Both of them in the garment business. That is weird. That is weird. I know. Well, uh, before everything crashes here, we're going to shift to locals for our uh, after party for as long as that can go on. I hope you guys consider following us over there. And by the way, have we told you that there's a meetup coming up? Oh, yeah. Tell them about this meetup. But first, I just want to ask for some subscribers. I'm tired of looking at this 109 number, and I don't know what the problem is, why people don't subscribe. You see people in the comments talking about, and I think we're just being shadow banned, to be honest with you. I hate to buzz balls, but 
if you can subscribe, please subscribe. If you can't, you can't. If it's some sort of political thing, I get it, I guess. Uh, but if you can, it would be great. And if subconsciously you hear a bell telling you to subscribe, you may want to check with your doctor. And it's free. And I heard, tell I, heard, you? I heard it was free. I heard it was free. It is free, folks. Um, and thanks and for the thanks do. for the book. Thanks for the JFK Book Fund donations to everyone. It's really appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And the meetup is in West Palm Beach. You can always check it out at America's Untold Stories. Is there a do you have a poster or anything? Yeah, I, I do. Like a flyer. Uh, okay. All right. Yeah, it's it's on the page that I'm typing one hand where I'm using the phone for a camera. And the other hand oh, on oh, the laptop. Oh, so please oh, bear with oh. me while I'm really working every angle I can to keep going. Oh my God, Hunley doing double service here. Yes, but it, uh, here we go. No, I gotta share that screen. Um, we are going to be in West Palm Beach giving the first ever friend is that, of is it, that's the poster. Award. Yeah. It is. Uh, I, this page, it's the way it's formatted. I can't. Oh, show okay. It I see better. the. I see the bottom. Okay, that's cool. I mean, I, here, here. Um, there you go. Oh, that's beautiful. What? What is <laughs> that? Is a, that's, that's West Palm Beach from the water. Right, but with, is there a thing that says the dates and the place or anything, or no? Well, we're we're describing that right now. May May eighteenth. Oh. It's all on that page. Oh, you go okay. to America's Untold Stories okay. right slash on. events. Right it's on. the first thing you're going to see. Right on. And um, it the event is the uh, 18th of May. That Saturday evening, that's going to be the only event on the weekend that we are doing. Special guest is Viva Fry, who is receiving the first ever uh, Friend of America's Untold Stories award. What? Oh, man, that's positive. That's positive. Well, he's a he's a positive kind of guy, and oh, yeah, it's a yeah. rare he's opportunity. Bring, he's bringing the catch of the day. By the way, you'll be eating the fish that uh, Viva catches that day, so uh, uh, be prepared for that. It could be anything. It could be an alligator. It could be carp. It could be uh, you know shark, baby shark. Maybe. <laughs> well, I mean, I've yeah. gone over his. I've gone over his house, and his and and Marion has been preparing the catch of the day, so I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't put it past him bringing fish to his own event. I would not either. I would not either. But it can't be the uh, fish that Ethan caught. Yeah, that was that's gone. That's gone. Because uh, that that fish, uh, that one did get away. And I'm putting a link in the uh, description right now. If people want to refresh, check it out. AmericasUntoldStories.com slash events. Mm -hmm. Really hope that we get to see you there. Um, we got one more super chat that comes in. Why was the masterful film short by Billy Crystal and Christopher Guest banned from the internet? Because it's two guys in the Negro League? Uh, could be. I mean, Billy Crystal famously um, did a bunch of different characters like that. Yeah, I remember him doing a Negro. I think he did one in blackface, as a matter of fact. Maybe that's why. Probably. I, th I think so. Be. I think that, if I remember correctly, I think that's correct. Now, there are times, though, that... Um, Things don't appear on the internet. And it's not nefarious in that way. It could be that the writer who was involved sued the show or claimed rights to a bit, and so they couldn't reproduce it. Or you know, th sometimes there's other things like Mark. I think we're gonna sometime do a show talking about your experiences with heavy metal, and there was a huge problem with that movie and the rights to all the music and how. Oh, so it's man. not always nefarious. That yeah. something doesn't come out. Sometimes Usually it's just a rights problem. Yeah, it could be a rights issue. So I, I do mm -hmm. want to point that out. And it's um, not civil rights. He's talking about uh, copyright issues. No, we're talking about cash. Oh, which is uh, what, what they're uh, the rights generally are all about money, Whoa. and uh, whether they have it or not. So Whoa. everybody, I hope you follow us over to locals unstructured.locals.com. We are going to head there now. I'm going to try to not have my arm fall off and see if the cameras work. Go there to see if Eric can hang in on this stream. Oh, you're a trooper, honey. It's honey. a little crazy. Wow. Let's see.